Hi all. I want to take that plarn that I uh, was working with in my last video and make a, uh, a container uh, out of it. I'm, I'm using one right now. This is my prototype. Uh, it's kind of like a clay coil basket. That's the, the way I made it. So uh, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this lid from a, a container of peanuts to create a, a stable bottom. And then I can um, use this coil pot to um, crochet over. There are a couple ways you can do this. You can just crochet a circle and until it's the size of this and then just lay this in the bottom of the, the container. Um, or we could cut a hole in it and then crochet over and then it'll have a little hole in the bottom. So I'm just going to make a um, soft flexible bottom because when I was making this coil pot this was really hard to do. Uh, especially the start and so it left a hole in the middle and it wasn't it just wasn't easy to work with um, as the bottom so I'm going to just start a like a hat circle you know just do four chains this is leftover yarn from um, Red Heart Roll With It Tweed Um, I think it's a very thick four, it might even be a five weight. I'm using a 5.5 hook. Now I'm just crocheting single crochets over the tail and into the ring of four chains. Uh, I think I'm going to do... Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one more. That's eight. Eight. It's a, to close the circle. Then I go back into that same stitch that I had slip stitched through and you pull up a loop and then you pull through like it was a single crochet and then just do another single crochet into that same loop and do two single crochets all the way around. two in there. So we're going to do two in here. One, two. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. So we've come around, we've doubled it. You can also tell because this um, leg goes down into the first circle and that's where we started so I'm just going to continue around um, just making single crochets but now I will do two and then one like that okay two in the next space one I might need to get a bigger hook for this yarn. Two, and then the next one, we do one. I'm going to try a larger hook. This is 6.5 millimeter. I love my tea. Um, Timo 
tool with the Timo, but I don't think it's big enough for this yarn. What does this say? It says it's a four, but it's it's really uh, squishy. So it's, it's a very thick four. Okay. So I did two here and then one. And if you want to, you could use a um, stitch marker to keep track of where you are. Because basically I'm doing a spiral at this point. Just keep an eye on your uh, curl or ruffles. Because as you spiral, you could, you could lose track of where you are and making them, making the um, stitches, you know, doubled up or single, you can lose track of that. I've, I've already lost track of where I am. I think this is it right here. So now it's uh, double and then two singles. On the third row, you do a grouping of, of three, three stitches in a row in a certain certain type. So it's two, one, one, two, one, one. And I'm doing this because it's so much faster than making the pot with the coil in it from the center. I'm just going to use this plastic as the uh, inside of the lid, inside of the base. You could do anything, really. If you had a square piece of plastic that you wanted to uh, use as your base, you could make a square, um, a square pot, square basket. Um, I'm just trying to do this as fast as possible. So I'll meet you back when this is the size of this pot. So I've made a little circle for the um, plastic coil pot, as I'm calling it. And I'm going to use this as my base. I'm going to form my circle over this. I like to change it up a little bit so it doesn't look like a hexagon as much. At least I try to. I'm kind of um, just kind of mess with my stitch count at random places and start doing the next uh, stitch pattern for each level. And I also don't level up, I spiral. So as you can see, this is a spiral. There's no clear uh, place where it is um, the beginning and ending of a row or round. So now I'm going to I'm pretty sure this is ready to go. I think it's just about, I probably could put one more row, but I'm going to make this the outer row. This will fit on the bottom. And then this will be around the edge going up. So I'm gonna add this into my coil, just like this. I'm gonna go through the holes in the ends. Okay, that secures it in there. And now we're just going to do one to one. Right over the plastic uh, yarn, which we're calling Plarn. Um, a lot of people call it Plarn, so don't feel like you're saying something that nobody else is going to understand. A lot of people call this stuff Plarn. 
So I'm just doing one to one, one single crochet over the plarn. And when I get enough um, stitched in before it starts to curve too much, but I want to make sure I have like my five or six stitches here, I'm going to pull this tight. I might have to take a, um, a sewing needle and try to cover this when we're done. That's one of the things that I've noticed about this is that the, the plarn will show through a little bit. I don't know if you've ever worked with uh, twine baskets and yarn where you like basically take um, like clothesline type twine and then crochet over that. You will see the, the yarn <clears throat> underneath. That's another reason why I chose this leftover yarn. Not only is it, you know, just scrap yarn for this type of project, it's, uh, it's tweed. So it has uh, white flecks in it. And I thought that would help kind of disguise some of the white uh, plastic showing through. So this is it. This is the project. I'm just going to go over that. It makes a sturdy side wall. And then I'm going to fit this down in the bottom. It'll be very tight at the bottom. So I'll meet you back when we get over here. Let me go all the way around and over here. Okay, so I am now at the end of the first round with the plarn in the body of each stitch. We are at the last one. I'm going to double up. Basically, I'm going to do another stitch on that first stitch. Like that. And then we're just going to level up and go into the next stitch that's, you know, in the, the, the last level. But we're going into the top of it. See, we're just going into the stitches. We're not... Um, doing anything special. We're just, it's like a coil pot. I don't know if anybody here has ever done clay in um, school or took a class on how to make a coil pot on a clay pot, but it's, it's just a continuous round spiraling up. And that was the hardest, hardest one that you're going to have because you have to deal with that that join where it started and we will use a little bit of scrap yarn and take a needle and and uh, the scrap yarn and we're just gonna basically sew over this end here and cover it we don't want to cut it off because it has a loop that is um, anchored by the yarn so we don't want to cut the, the plarn. So we're going to keep doing this one to one until we get um, the height of the basket that you like. You could do this in oval shapes if you wanted to. Um, the bottom is soft, so you could um, you know, make a square, like a dishcloth shape and then coil pot on top of that. Uh, whatever shape you like. This is uh, acrylic yarn. Yeah, 100% acrylic. And because every time you wash acrylic, you release microplastics into the water, um, you wanna try to start using acrylic 
project, acrylic yarn for projects that don't need to be washed or not washed very often. That way you will start uh, to protect our waterways and our bodies from getting microplastics in them. Um, our food is filled with microplastics. Our water is filled with microplastics. Um, our soil is filled with microplastics. And part of that is because of products like these acrylic yarns. So if you want to use up the acrylic yarns that you have, I would suggest a project like this because not only are you preventing plastic bags from going into the landfill, you're preventing microplastics from going into our water. Um, yeah, I'm off my soapbox now. Um, let's, let's help heal the planet and make pretty things for our homes. I'll meet you back when I'm finished with this project. So I just wanted to kind of remind you to periodically fit your form so that you know that you're on track. And to, this is the other thing I've been doing is every now and then, you see how it's getting like spaces where you can see, you can tug the plastic a little bit and kind of push the cloth of the, the, the yarn over it. Yeah, it might make it a little kind of curl in a little bit, but it has actually a nat natural tendency to curl out like this. So you have to watch it and kind of tighten it up a little bit as you go. And yeah, the, you'll sew in all the ends at the, at the end when you're done. But yeah, just keep going around and around until you make this whatever size you want it to be, whatever shape you want it to be. This is um, practically free form because I, um, I'm just going with my gut. It's, it's whatever you want it to be. You can make these into little squares that fit those cubbies. You can make them into baskets that shape, you know. You could use, use this for handles. You can make purses. I mean, because it's very sturdy. And yeah, I did do the bottom on this one with the coil, but I'm not doing that for this one. This one's just a regular circle that I'm reinforcing with a plastic lid from something I would have normally just thrown in the recycle bin. Or if you don't have that in your community, it would go in the garbage. So this is um, just reusing things that would normally be trash. All right, I'm, I'm done giving you tips um, as far as I can tell. I'll come back if I have any more tips. But keep on going until you're done your project and I'll show you mine at the end. So, um, I just realized I'm crocheting with the right side on the inside. And that might be another reason why my uh, basket is curling inward rather than curling outward on this one. This one tended to curl outward. Um, and if you just want to change that, just flip it. Go like that. Okay. It also makes it, I think, a little easier to crochet, but you see how now it looks like it wants to curl this way, curl outward. It's just, um, just something I just noticed that I was... Um, crocheting. It's a little difficult, I think, to crochet on the inside versus from the outside. That's just my opinion. Um, you may find it easier to do it this way. But yeah, I just wanted to show you that you can just flip it and you can crochet from the inside or the outside. It doesn't matter. Whichever is comfortable for you. 
I just think that when you crochet from the outside, it has a natural tendency to curve outward and get larger and larger. So just um, to combat that, hold your yarn stitches and pull the coil. Did you see that? It pulled it inward. You don't want to do too, too uh, much, but just enough to make sure that it stays you know, in a uniform shape and doesn't, you know, travel. Um, the other thing is if you have a container that you want your project to be the size of, just put it in your project and crochet tightly to it. And then that will be the size of the container that you're crocheting around. Kind of like training wheels. Because once you're done, you can take the, the project the container out and your project should just stand on its own because this uh, plarn is really stiff and if you uh, crochet tightly and pull the plarn every now and then tightly against your um, your framing project you'll you'll have a you have a freeform standing object like you could crochet around this drinking cup you know tightly around that and then when you're done, just take the drinking cup out and then you have a basket that size and that shape. I've done that with square containers before and made square container covers, but uh, I've never done it with the Plarn where I could actually just have a whole nother basket shape, you know, and it would freeze, it would stand freestanding. So think about it. Look around your house. If there are objects that you like the size and shape of, you could crochet around it with Plarnin, and then when you pull that object out, this will stay. This will keep its shape. Give it a try. Okay, so here is the finished product. I'm going to Use that for the knitting needles I used to get from Smiley's and my uh, yarn orders from them. They used to put in complimentary knitting needles. Um, one day I'll learn how to knit. But yeah, here's a little, little coal pot to add to my collection of things to hold things. I hope that you enjoyed this and you can come up with all kinds of different ways of working with this plarn and yarn. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe.